Oh, thank you, uh, Jeff. I've never heard that version of that song. I love it. I've been around New Thought for so long, and I've never heard that. That is a keeper. That, and if anybody was feeling like we are singing too much, then you got a big dose of it right there. <laughs> Wow, so good morning, good morning. Um, when I knew that I was speaking, I, of course, started spinning titles in my head. And last night, I had this whole thing written out. And just as I was going back through it and editing, my little machine decided to lock up. And, and it went into uh, cyberspace somewhere and never was uh, able to be recovered. But, you know, Spirit's been working with me and has been saying to me, come on, come on, come on, just get up there and do your thing. You've done it before. You need to just trust. And so that's what I'm doing. And that's really part of my message today about paying our good forward. And I almost feel like I could just sit down and say end of service based on that song because that had everything in it. <laughs> it really did, you know. Uh, but... When I thought of talking, when I knew I was talking the day, the service, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, the first title that came to me, I said to Des, oh, I know what it's going to be. I'm going to talk about leftovers. <laughs> 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 and, you know, because for some people, leftovers is the best part of Thanksgiving. Some people sort of say, you know what, I eat turkey all year, but the best things are those leftovers. And then some people, by the time they get to Sunday, they're like, oh, anybody in here already feel like I've had enough leftovers? No, nope? no, okay, <laughs> well, good. And then I thought, well, of course, it's got to be about spiritual. But if I talk about spiritual leftovers, well, then it would sound like I'm going to be talking about forgiveness. And in a way, I am. And that was covered in the very first one of that song, Forgive and Release. And I notice that forgiveness is one of those really hard, it's probably the hardest thing that we humans end up having to do is forgive. And, and a lot of times people will say, well, I'll forgive, but I'm not going to forget. Or they'll say, well, I've forgiven, but I can't forgive myself. I was on somebody's YouTube channel the other night, and I looked, I'm looked. i looking back through the chat of people writing comments, and many, many times people were writing, self-forgiveness is so hard. And I heard a nun once say, in a class I was taking, she was one of the students, one of my peers, and she said she had heard that it's up to us to forgive ourselves and up to God to forgive everyone else. That's a unique perspective. What if our job is just to forgive ourselves and leave all of that other stuff about everyone else to God? I think that self-forgiveness is still a full-time job, and I think that's why it is so challenging for most of us to forgive ourselves. I mean, if I just say to you, well, what about that time you did that thing? Or you said those things? Or what about that time or those times that you didn't do certain things? Or you didn't say what maybe could have been said, or you might beat yourself up and say should have been said. What about those very private places where you kind of go, oh, ugh, and how many of you, even when you hear about all the dirt coming out about different people, think, I'm glad that's not me. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Say amen if you know what I mean. Amen. <laughs> yeah, we know. And, you know, I have, I have some thoughts about all of that stuff that keeps coming out about people. But what if I were to tell you that those places 
where you feel or any of us feel like, oh, I'd almost rather not remember what I did or didn't do and what I said or didn't say. I would almost rather not remember. Why did she have to bring that up this morning? I wasn't even thinking about those things. Okay, but what if I tell you that those are your places of greatest, not only wisdom, but empathy. Empathy. Empathy is the missing piece. It's the e-learning that we have available to us that makes forgiveness such an incredible tool, such an incredible bridge to move between feeling oh, horrible, suffering, having that long dark night of the soul, and in claiming and rejoicing in our freedom. Forgiveness is that place where we get to move into that feeling of really knowing that the joy, the joy of the Lord or the joy of the spiritual law is our strength. Oh, my heavens. I, I wonder, how many of you feel like you have felt your very story of where you used to suffer with lack of forgiveness? How many of you have felt that change and really feel like your story has been rewritten as you have moved forward in your life? How many of you have felt that way? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. See, you already know. I'm preaching to the choir here. You already know. And yet for many years, as long as I was in New Thought, I still was holding on to my old stories. I still had them. And uh, there was a wonderful speaker named Mary Lee Zawadzki who used to talk about, uh, she used to, act, she actually ha had a book called, I think it was called, Who the Hell Do You Think You Are? And she was really <laughs> saying that we had no right to be so arrogant, to think that we had to do it all, that we had to be so humanly perfect. And we have no right, in a way, to chastise ourselves because we were made in an awesome way. Or many times we have been made and had a sense of feeling remade by this wonderful creative energy, this essence, this source that we, that we uh, come here to remember and be absolutely enthralled with reconnecting with this wonderful source that we call by many names many wonderful names we call it god we call it spirit we call it essence source lots of different things but we have no right in a way to chastise ourselves to complain about our bodies to judge ourselves as we are made by this wonderful essence and yet that is where we often are the hardest on ourselves. That is where we place the greatest amount of blame and beat ourselves up. I should have said, I should have done. I wish I hadn't done this. I wish I hadn't said that. And yet, do you think that we are chastised by spirit? I don't. And I think that's why we come to new thought. Because we know that we don't believe in that old wrathful God and some of us yet still might have little closets little places little boxes of old oh man I sure hope I'm I sure hope I'm going to heaven I sure hope I'm not chastised but really what if what if you could imagine being face to face with this essence Face to face, what if it is comprised of all the most loving people you've ever known or all the most loving energy you've ever, ever contemplated? What if you're face to face with it and you find out that you are not condemned for any of your human experience? What if you are understood based on who you were at that time and what you were going through at that time? And what if you are told that you are loved, that you are set free, and you are charged with the mission to pay it forward, to go forward into the world and to use that, use those experiences, not to eat yourself up with and beat yourself up with in the middle of the night, but to draw on them for empathy, to draw on them for wisdom, 
to remember that you have been there. You have been there, done that, with all kinds of stuff that gives each of us the ability to not chastise others and to not judge others and to remember that in the human experience, we will remember, we will do imperfect things. In the human experience, we are going to do all kinds of less than perfect things because we came here not as our natural selves. We are natural. We have our natural selves. But we came here to embody these times and these places to show up and, and even maybe to forget for a while and then to remember. What does it mean to remember? It means to reconnect with this essence. It's almost like God is playing with us and saying, ha, let's play a game. I'm going to send you out there because you wanted to realize the, the wonderfulness of it all in the physical to bring it all about, let's say. And then I'm going to let you rediscover who you are. I'm going to let you rediscover the essence of who I am, who you are, and who we are all together as this oneness, this fascinating oneness. And I'm even going to show you who you are in other people. When you're going around and you're not liking behaviors of other people, guess what? That's a little knocking on the door. Oh, see? See who you are in this moment? Or when you're beating yourself up and you're going to remember other people who don't like who they are. There's a wonderful story, a Leo Buscaglia. You remember Leo Buscaglia? Some people call him Leo Buscaglia, but an Italian Leo Buscaglia. He tells this wonderful story of a peach that, was c that came into this world, and it was a beautiful, absolutely succulent, voluptuous peach. Only when it was there in the world, it saw that peaches were not in. It was not cool to be a peach. It saw the bananas. I mean, the bananas are hanging out. They're just having a good time. They're, you know, they get to be appealing. <laughs> 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 they get to go into the smoothies and the pies and the wonderful banana pudding that Tony made and then at our house. And they get to do all kinds of things. So this peach said, <laughs> I don't want to be a peach. I'm going to turn myself into a banana. And so it started to work at that. And I mean, it started to really reinvent itself. And it went and it had, oh man, surgical procedures. <laughs> and it took all those health food supplements and herbs. And by golly, it turned into a fabulous looking banana. And it said, ha, I made it. And it went out into the world, and it started doing those banana things. <laughs> and then all of a sudden one day, somebody was digging for that dirt, you know, and they said, ha, 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 that, that banana-looking thing over there is not a first-rate banana. Guess what? It's being an imposter. That banana is not a banana. It's really a peach, and it's been fooling all of us. And so... Some little crowd got together and they said, huh, okay, banana, enough of you. Banana, split. <laughs> and so here we are in the world, sometimes thinking we're not supposed to be the peach that we were created to be. But guess what? There are some people like me who like peaches much better than bananas. I will pass up banana, a banana any day for a peach. So please be the peach that you are. And remember, there are many people who need to know. those. They may not need to know the vulnerable places of everywhere that you've been, but they need to know that you've been there. They don't need to know what they should do. They don't need to be preached at with all the things that you know or think you know. And I need to, sometimes I need to know when I need to stop working. Sometimes it's time to listen and be there. It's time to show up and love the hell out of people. <laughs> love the hell out of everything and everyone because <laughs> that's what we all need. So I want to give you a little poem that I found in a book. This is a quote by Shel Silverstein, poet and author. How many slams in an old screen door depends how loud you shut it. 
How many slices in a bread depends how thin you cut it. How much good inside a day depends how good you live them. How much love inside a friend depends how much you give them. Yeah. Okay. So let's have our affirmation and then we'll have a little bit of a little bit of meditative prayer and let me get this thing to refresh. Okay, our affirmation on those on the screen. I have all the courage I need. My own my real true self. Well, it would be nice if this thing read right, but well, I have the courage I need to be my true self and that's what I want you to get from this. So let's go into a quiet place. Ah, great spirit, we embrace this time knowing that it is ours to pay our good forward, to practice forward forgiveness as we dare to be okay with all the places where we have been, with all the things that we have done or not done, said or not said, we know that with spirit, we are okay. We know that we have had many lessons and that we have had our scrap paper, our mistakes like the photographers had, and that those are our business, no one else's. And yet we can show up and we can give our love and our compassion. We can give our forward Forgiveness, adding our voice to the one voice that we are part of, to the great love that we are part of. And so it is. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. <laughs>